in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Welcome to this Eucharist on the Feast of Pentecost, the birthday of the Church, when we celebrate the great gift of the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of Truth, who as a good friend of ours will always speak the truth to us and to our conscience. And so, brethren, let us acknowledge our sins so that we may prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries on this solemn feast of Pentecost. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest and praise to his people on earth. Let us pray. 
O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. When Pentecost Day came round, the Apostles had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven, and at this sound they all assembled, each one bewildered, to hear these men speaking in his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews, proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. The Lord. Sorial Psalm, response. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul, Lord God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord? The earth is full of your riches. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You take back your spirit, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I find joy in the Lord. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. A second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. In the one spirit, we were all baptized. No one can say Jesus is Lord unless he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done, but always to the same Lord, working in all sorts of different ways in different people it is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. Just as a human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit because all these parts, though many, make one body, so it is with Christ. In the one Spirit, we were all baptized, Jews, slaves, as well as citizens, to us all to drink. 
This is the word of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
the gospel we've just heard from chapter 20 of John brings us back to the first day, to the day of the resurrection. Fifty days ago, we celebrated Easter, and this is the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, where the people of God, the Jewish people, made a great festival, which was a harvest festival. It was a festival that actually celebrated God's creation and was also a festival of thanksgiving. When you look at the fields around our countryside, you realize that most of the grains and most of the uh, crops are now being harvested because we are on the same uh, sort of level as the uh, level of Palestine, where Jesus uh, lived 2,000 years ago. And so we can understand why Pentecost is, is the festival of the harvest. On the same day of Easter, on Easter Sunday, the Lord appears to his disciples and shows them his true identity when he shows them his hands and his side, his wounds, convince them that it is the master. And the disciples are filled with joy when they see the Lord. And he repeats his greeting, peace be with you. He sends them forth, gives them a mission. And then he does something which I would like to share with you in a more profound way. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus breathing on his disciples reminds us of the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, where the Lord in the act of creation of humankind breathes into this image made out of clay and brings forth, creates Adam, the first man. And Jesus repeats this gesture, this movement of breathing on his disciples. We are at a new beginning. We are at a new creation. He had said, I will make everything new. And this is what we celebrate on this day, the Feast of Pentecost. And a beautiful meditation on the eve of Pentecost 2010, Pope Benedict reflected on the beautiful title the churches uses to invoke and address the Holy Spirit as a creator spirit, creator spiritus. And Pope Benedict said, when we look at a beautiful landscape, when we enjoy the countryside, a beautiful view, we are actually looking at the creation that comes forth from the Spirit of God. And we realize that we are in good hands. We are in the hands of the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is a good friend of ours. He is sent by the Lord as our paraclete, our advocate, not only to stand by us, as I had the opportunity to, to share with you a couple of Sundays ago, but also to tell us the truth. A good friend will always speak the truth to you. And that is what the Spirit does. That is why Jesus calls him the Spirit of Truth. He's not to condemn you. He's not there to condemn you. But he's there to be a guide and a counsellor a good guide and a good counsellor will not give you fake news. He will tell you the truth. And so that's why when Jesus breathes on his disciple this great gift of the Holy Spirit, he talks about the forgiveness of sins. But I realize that I'm a sinner because somebody has actually loved me so much to tell me where I'm not okay. 
<laughs> and the fact is that the Holy Spirit not only tells me where I am, but also brings the remedy. Because the forgiveness of sins is also through the Spirit. It is so important to realize, as St. John Paul II teached in taught in his great document on the Holy Spirit, Dominum et Vivicantem, that Easter is actually the, the work of the Holy Spirit. And I would like to share with you a prayer which we priests say in secret. You know, we have some prayers where you see us, we're not mumbling really, but the rubrics, the indications of the liturgy say, now the priest will pray silently. Usually it's a prayer where we recognize that we are sinners and that we really are indebted with the Lord's mercy. And this is what the priest before receiving communion prays. Lord Jesus Christ, son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death, gave life to the world. What a beautiful prayer this is. And I would like to share it with you. The, the church in her prayer realizes that Jesus Christ gave life to the world. And that is what his breath on his disciples means. He is giving life, new life to the world by the work of the Holy Spirit. And so we pray today that we bathe in the light and the love of the Holy Spirit who wants to make of each one of us a new creation. Come, Holy Spirit, and kindle our hearts with your truth and your love. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism, for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Now, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is there at Pentecost with the disciples, let us pray for an outpouring of this great gift of the Holy Spirit on the Holy Father, Pope Francis, which should have visited us this day on the Feast of Pentecost. And we not only pray for the Holy Father, but pray that the Holy Spirit may endow his heart with love, patience, and strength. Lord, hear us. We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, religious in the church who have dedicated their lives as a life of service, that the Spirit may be their counsel and their comfort. Lord, hear us. We pray for the gift of peace in the world. May the Holy Spirit enlighten the hearts of our leaders and make of all of us generous citizens of this beautiful world. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who are anxious, who are suffering, who are sick and are dying. We pray for all those caring for them, that they may have the wisdom, the courage, and the consolation of the Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all families and for all those preparing for marriage, that they may be enkindled in their hearts with the love of the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Let us all say a special prayer and ask for a grace we all need, something special. We may think of our loved ones, our friends, our dear ones. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord Jesus, breathe on us the gift of your Spirit. You who reign forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice. Ungracious lead us into all truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. The blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us another, an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your mother of God, with Joseph, her chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, with Joseph, my assistant bishop, with Bishop Mayo, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. To Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ receive it. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself, myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. to Our Lady of Malia. O Blessed Virgin, revealed by our forefathers at your sacred shrine of Malia from the earliest days of Christianity, as they always put their trust in you and you deliver them, so do we now beseech you to cast your gracious look on us and heal us of our afflictions in soul and body. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, save God, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds 
by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Oh,